Hi there! If you're confused about time and space complexity and why they matter, you are in the right place. We'll break it all down for you so that the next time you're asked to figure out what an algorithm, time and space complexity is, you will feel confident and ready to tackle with ease. Let's get started! Any piece of code that runs anywhere, whether it is your local machine, a client-side web app or a server deployed on the cloud takes up some time to execute and some space in the memory to do the computations. The basic version of this can be seen when you run any program on your computer. The terminal shows the time taken to run that program. Therefore, to find the most optimized way of writing any program, we want to know how much time and space it will take to execute. But there is a problem here. Let's say we take any program. Suppose just a print Hello World program. Now, this program will take different amounts of time on different machines. The time taken will differ from an old <laughs> Windows machine with lower specifications. It can be executed quickly on a new Apple MacBook Pro with an M1 chip. The same holds for the memory used for execution. I hope you understand the problem here. Guessing the exact time taken by any piece of code is difficult. As a programmer, you know the same code can be deployed and executed on different machines, based on the scenario. But as you know, developers are smart, maybe. They have figured out a very interesting solution to this problem, which is, we use the time of the input as a foundation to analyze the time and space utilization. What we do is understand how the time and space utilization will be affected by increasing the input size. So if we double the input size, the time utilized will also be doubled, or it will increase four times, for example, assuming, of course, that we are running the program on the same machine. Hence, we calculate time and space complexity based on a program's input size. This gives us a great idea of how much time and space it will take to increase the input size without any dependency on the machine it's being run on. Let's take the same Hello World program, but with a twist this time. Let's print a Hello World an n number of times. If we keep n equal 1, the program takes 0.001 millisecond to execute. If we increase the input to n equal 2, the program will take twice as long because it will have to print Hello World two times, which makes the execution time 0.002 millisecond. This goes on likewise. Hence, you can conclude that the time taken by this program is directly proportional to the input size. This example gives you an idea. Also, it's a very simple program, but what will happen if we write complex programs like binary search? How would we calculate their time and space complexity? Also, this is just a reminder not to get intimidated by the term complexity. It's just a technical term given by the researchers. You can read it as the time taken or space utilized. Moving forward, before we begin understanding how to calculate different programs' time and space complexity, we'll dive a bit into mathematics and understanding big O notation. Some of you might have heard this before, but don't worry, it's not difficult if you understand the concept behind it. Once you understand this properly, it will become easy for you to understand and calculate any future program's time and space complexities. Let's begin! Big O notation is a mathematical notation that describes the limiting behavior of a function when the argument tends towards a particular value or infinity. It's a member of a family of notations invented by Paul Bachmann, Edmund Landau, and others, collectively called Bachmann-Landau notation, or asymptotic notation. Other notations are omega, theta, and the little o notation. However, for the purpose of this video, we'll focus only on the big O notation. Once you understand the big O notation, reading and understanding the other notations, it will be easy, no worries. You can also do that after you finish watching this video. So let's now understand what big O notation is, what we mean by limiting behavior of a function here, and why we need that. So let's take two functions, one called g of n and another called f of n. Let's first plot the function g of n on a graph. As you can see, g of n looks like this when plotted. Let's similarly also plot f of n. And here you go. Now let's multiply g of n with some positive constant value, for example c. The graph of c multiplied g of n looks as shown in the graph. And as you can see, 
there is a value here where c multiplied g of n and f of n intersect. Suppose at this point of intersection the value of n equal n0. Now, as you can see, after point n0, the value of f of n is always less than the value of c multiplied g of n. Or we can alternatively say f of n will remain lesser than c multiplied g of n. And boom! we found what we were looking for. We can safely say here that c multiplied g of n is an upper bound for f of n when the argument n here is greater than a constant value n0. And this is just alternatively written as f of n equal big O of g of n. To formally write this, we can say f of n is big O of g of n if for some constant c and n0 f of n is less than c multiplied g of n for all n greater than n0. Let's understand this with a couple of examples. Let's say that we have a function called g of n equal 1. Now f of n is less than or equal to 5 times g of n for all values where n is greater than or equal to 0. And hence, we can say that f of n is equal to big O of g of n equal big O of 1. Similarly, now let's take a parabolic function. Let's say that g of n equal n squared plus 2. Then, as you can see, if we multiply g of n with a constant, let's say 4, which makes the graph of 4 multiplied g of n, as you can see here, if we define f of n equal n squared, then we'll have f of n less than or equal 4 multiplied g of n for all the values of n greater than 0. So in big O notation, f of n equal O of g of n or f of n equal O of n squared. You got the concept here. If the time complexity of any function is a parabolic function of the input size n, then we can say that the time complexity in big O notation is O n squared. If the time complexity is constant, which in other words is independent of the input size, in big O notation the time complexity becomes O of 1. So this is all that you need to know about the big O notation and what it means. This is a bit mathematical and it can be difficult to understand at first, but once you grasp the concept, the complexity of the other parts of time and space will be very easy from now. If you are still unclear about this, please go ahead and re-watch this section to understand the big O notation, and then move forward to the next section. If you have any question, just please comment below. I will be happy to help you out. And finally, let's move on to understanding how to calculate time and space complexity. Let's go. Let's begin with this very simple program. Let's say the program is just to print a hello world statement, as you can see on the screen. Now, if we run this program, let's see how we can understand the time it takes and the space utilized. As you know, once compiled, the code is executed line by line. There is only one line of code here, the print statement. And as you can tell, it will take a constant amount of time to execute. Let's say k. Now, what if you increase the input size here? But wait. There is no input size, so the input size is non-existent here. Hence, the execution of this program will always take a constant time. So the time complexity t of n here is equal to k. So t of n equal k, which, as we just learned in big O notation, can be written as t of n equal k multiplied 1, where g of n equal 1. Hence, the time complexity will be t of n equal big O of 1. Now let's move on the understanding the space complexity. The space in memory used here will also be some constant value. Let's say m. So s of n equal m. Again, this is independent of the input size. So the space complexity will also be s of n equal big O of 1. Let's now take another example. This time we will see an improved version of the previous example. 
As you can see on the screen, the method here runs a loop and prints all the numbers starting from 1 to n, with n being the input size. So let's first calculate the time complexity. The time taken for the print statement to execute will be some constant, let's say k, but this print statement will be executed an n number of times. So the time complexity t of n equal k multiplied n. As we have seen in big O notation, this becomes big O of n. So the time complexity will be t of n equal big O of n here. And the same goes for the space complexity. The space taken during the execution of the print statement will be a constant value, let's say m. Applying a similar logic here, since the print statement will be executed an n number of times, the overall space complexity is going to be s of n equal m times n, which in big O notation is again going to be s of n equal big O of n. Before we close this, let's take one final example, and this is going to be a bit more complex. Let's take the binary search example. As you can see, we are passing an array called R and a number in the array called K, which we need to search in this array. Keep in mind that the array R is sorted here, and now if we go line by line, lines 2 and 3 will take constant time. For simplicity, we'll write big O of 1 in front of them. And now going on to the while loop, line 6 will also take constant time. Hence, the complexity will be big O of 1. After that, there is a block of if-else statements. There are three options that can be implemented, either line 9, 11 or 13. All of them will take a constant time, so the time complexity of these statements, if executed once, will be big O of 1. And now comes the interesting part. This if-else block will be executed the number of times the while loop runs here. And how many times does the while loop run here? Either the if statement will be executed, returning the value we found, and this means that the program is done executing, so there is nothing to worry about. But if the else if statement is true, then the value of low becomes low plus one, and so the array to be considered becomes just half, or the number of times the loop will now run becomes half. And if neither the if nor the else if statement runs, the else block runs, and then the value of high becomes mid minus one, which again cuts the number of times this loop will run by half. Hence, each time the code within the while loop runs, the overall size of the array in consideration, or the input here, gets reduced by half. So if the size of the array is 4, the while loop runs 4 divided by 2, and then 2 divided by 2, so 2 times. If the array's size is 16, the while loop runs 16 divided by 2, 8 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2, and then 2 divided by 2, which means it gets executed 4 times. So with a size of 4, the loop runs 2 times. With a size of 16, it runs 4 times. Similarly, with a size of 32, it runs 5 times. As you might have guessed, the loop runs log base 2 of n times. So the algorithm overall time will be big O of log base 2 of n multiplied big O of 1, which gives us a big O of log base 2 of n. Similarly, the space complexity is also just dependent on the number of times the loop runs, since everything else takes up constant space here. This gives us the space complexity to be big O of log base 2 of n. And that's a wrap for this video, it might have been a lot to take in at once, so let's quickly recap what you have learned. We started by discussing why we needed to consider space and time complexity. It's all about optimizing your code and finding the best way to design algorithms and efficiently use time and space. Then we introduced the big O notation and how it gives us an upper bound meaning we can be sure an algorithm will take at most big O of n time. 
We also looked at a few examples to see how to calculate time and space complexity in practice. But remember, we covered the three examples here, but you can always apply these concepts to other programs to see if you have grasped the concepts. That's everything you need to know to get started with time and space complexity. Don't feel discouraged or overwhelmed by these concepts. The more you make practice, the easier they will become, and soon you'll be fluent in them. This video was just the beginning, giving you a solid foundation, so keep practicing and keep learning. Take care and happy coding. Ciao!